Hi, I'm Francis O'Reilly, and I'd like to welcome you to my next episode on telescope making. Today is December 10th, 2007, a Monday, and we're going to be discussing the telescope tube today. Next to me, I have a tube that I made uh, for my 8-inch F6 reflecting telescope. We'll be joined during this uh, little lecture and demonstration at one time or another, I'm sure, by Fortunato the Cat, also known by uh, one of our amateur telescope making associates as Fortunato the Contaminator. However, this uh, stage of the telescope making process isn't so delicate or sensitive to contamination. I purchased a 10 inch tube, relatively uh, moderately thick wall aluminum tube from Hastings Pipe in Hastings, Nebraska. I contacted them over the internet, found them to be extraordinarily cooperative, nice people. A firm that sells miles and miles and miles of irrigation tube every day has cut a small part of uh, their business aside, uh, not for profit, but to assist amateur telescope makers. When you contact Hastings Tube, know what you want, be specific with them, their prices are good, their shipping is good, be nice to them, they're accommodating us, this is by no means a uh, major source of revenue for them, it's simply something they do to accommodate the amateur telescope maker that is selling these tubes. Um, at, there was a time in which they would powder coat tubes for us, they no longer do that. I purchased a 54 inch tube for my 8 inch F6 telescope. Is it longer than I need? Yes, absolutely, it's longer than I need. I also had it rolled at one end, although I suspect that might not have been a good choice. Perhaps a beginner's mistake. Actually, I'm not a beginner, but this is the first time I've used a metal tube. I wanted my tube to be a deep, luscious, rich, full maroon, and I um, brought it to a powder coater to have it coated. What they did at the powder coater, originally they thought they were going to sandblast the tube and then coat it. After having considered, here comes Fortunato, uh, the tube and how it needed to be treated, they took a much more uh, labor-intensive approach and they took scotch bright and they scotch bright the entire exterior of the tube very, very thoroughly. Once it was thoroughly scotch brighted, they washed it down with acetone three times thoroughly until the rag they used came up clean. Now, acetone is a solvent, it's extremely flammable. In fact, I bought a gallon of acetone at a um, supply store, at a, a hardware store actually, and the warning on it for this one gallon says, Danger! Extremely flammable liquid and vapor. Vapors may cause flash fire. Read all cautions and directions on side and back panels before use. Of course, I didn't do that, but I got the point. You have to be very, very careful with this stuff. Not only do you have to be very careful with acetone, but if you're going to put the acetone <coughs> excuse me, on a rag of some sort, don't put the rag in a closed container when you're done with it. It will spontaneously combust, causing a fire that will burn down your home. Now my home is a field stone home on the outside. I live in Brewster, New York, across the street from a lovely apple orchard that's been around for uh, probably a little over a hundred years, Salinger's Orchards. And by the way, if you ever find yourself in uh, the town of Southeast, which coincidentally is in uh, roughly uh, south, the southeastern part of the New York State mainland in Putnam County, please stop by and uh, enjoy some of his uh, hot apple cider and the fresh fruits and vegetables. Everything okay there, Cat? In any, in any event, getting back to uh, the main point, you certainly don't want to start a fire. Even though I live in a field stone house, there's plenty combustible in my house, and I'm sure there is in yours also. 
He washed down the tube three times until the red came up clean with the acetone. Now acetone evaporates uh, and you really don't have to be too terribly concerned about it leaving a residue on the, pu on the uh, pipe, but he did wash down the outside very thoroughly. He then electrostatically charged it and coated it, shot it with this maroon paint. Once it was shot with the maroon paint, he put it into an oven, heated it up to 400 degrees, the paint melted on the tube, he took it out, let it cool, and then he shot it again with a clear coat, and that clear coat had gold speckles in it, which is what I wanted. He had a spanner wrench, uh, the powder coater, uh, had a spouter wrench, I, I speak English wrong. Uh, Jerry Schmidt, the powder, co power, powder coater at K&S Powder Coating in Poughkeepsie, actually LaGrange in Dutchess County, um, had it shot with um, clear coat with gold speckles. He had a, he had a spanner wrench that I saw that was absolutely beautiful. And the tube came out really, really well. Now, before I did that, I went through a test mounting. Stop biting my finger. Uh, and what I did was I drilled out the holes for the focuser, and I did that with an inch and a half uh, hole saw. I'm using an inch and a quarter focuser. I'm not a big fan of two-inch focusers on uh, eight-inch mirrors. I also drilled out the holes to attach the focuser, and I drilled out the holes to attach the diagonal holder. Unfortunately, I did it wrong, so I had to drill out another set of holes. I also drilled out and fitted the mirror holder. I have a uh, mirror holder that I bought many years ago from uh, University Optics, and uh, that's going obviously in the bottom. I had everything fit, then I took it all out, took it apart, brought it to the powder coater. Now the powder coater, because of the process, uh, by the way, after he, clear, after he shot it with a clear coat, he did once again put it in the, uh, in the oven, heated it up, cooled it off, then he wrapped it in plastic, gave me a jingle, said, come pick up your tube which I did. I, I, when I was done with bankruptcy court, I'm an attorney, I uh, ran out to uh, the powder coater and picked up the tube because in the end, at the end of the day, work is important, but telescope making is what it's all about. Uh, now, in the tube, I have to say that, you know, again, this is irrigation tube. Generally speaking, it's really pretty smooth, but there are a couple of uh, minor dents in it, and that's just the nature of the beast. You're buying irrigation tube. It's not something that was designed to be used as a telescope tube. It's an accommodation, but really it was really pretty good. There was also some weld splatter from the process they used to make the, uh, the tube, but that weld splatter was more or less taken care of. Interestingly enough, with the scotch bright, he had a couple of beefy guys in there, young men, uh, probably in their 20s, who were able to really scrub very well with the scotch bright, and they got it all taken care of. Now, Fortunato, you're going to have to step down because I'm about to demonstrate cleaning out the interior of the tube. What I did the other day with the interior of the tube was I um, scotch-brighted it. It had a black coating on the interior. I scotch-brighted the interior of the tube, and then I washed it really thoroughly with acetone. Yes, you have to leave now. I'm sorry. You've already been fed. Cats are not great fans, by the way, of uh, acetone. And I'm going to put the tube up on the table. And I'm going to turn the camera a little bit so that you can actually see what I'm doing here. If you've seen my other videos, you've noted that uh, I frequently have interruptions. Uh, in this particular video, so far I've been lucky the phone has yet to ring. Anne? Yeah? Would you come here for a minute, please? <clears throat> come over here, please, Anne. This is my, turn around, this is my lovely daughter, Anne. Anne, would you please remove Fortunato to someplace a little more appropriate for grouchy cats? Thank you. Open the acetone again.